You're listening to the Business Mike Podcast. Amazing interviews with entrepreneurs and industry thought leaders. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business Mike Podcast. And my guest today is Andrea. Andrea, can you just let the listeners and viewers know a little bit about yourself and, and what you do? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Andrea Koka. I am very excited and a bit nervous about today's experience. Uh, It's actually my first podcast episode, and I love firsts, and I know I have a great host, so thank you for inviting me. Uh, I am currently the Customer Experience and Quality Manager for Plaxi Romania, leading a team of eight members. And I am also a trainer for Customer Experience courses for the Marketing Institute in Bucharest. Right, and where are you best, Andrea? And also, how did you get involved in CX? Was it something you're always doing or did you transition into it from another field? Uh, I'm based in Bucharest, Romania. Uh, My background is in market research and marketing. I am both a chartered marketer and a member of the Customer Experience Professionals Association. Um, I guess I was always curious about understanding social patterns, but also how individual preferences arise. Uh, And even before I was aware there was a specific customer experience field, um, I was doing ethnographic interviews in customers' homes. I was cooking with them, watching TV, understanding their financial habits. I was doing journey mapping projects in healthcare and telecommunications, uh, and also running customer satisfaction and NPS trackers. Um, And as customer experience started being a thing, um, I wanted to be part of the CX transformation. So I designed and delivered trainings and consulted teams in various companies and industries at different maturity CX levels until about three years ago, where uh, when I joined Plug C and back then it was Sodexo, and I have been developing the CX strategy and my team here. And uh, I do have to give kudos to my team on the record. Uh, because they really managed to uh, put both internal and external stakeholders first and uh, we improve everything single day. So I really love the field because they are so passionate about it and we can be passionate about the customers together. You mentioned a good thing there about the team that you have and how active they are in helping to deliver a very good customer experience. And during the conversations that I have, one thing that comes up is beyond your team, the rest of the people in the organization, what role do they play in helping you deliver a great customer experience? Because sometimes the assumption is that's your problem, that it's your team to solve that. And so they're not Mm -hmm. necessarily involved depending on the organization that you're working in. So in your instance, how do they loop into what you do for the customers? Um, I made it my mission for every department to be aware of what customer experience is and how they can play a part in it and how they usually play a part in it, whether they want to or are aware of it or not. Um, And within these three years, we actually managed to create a governance system and get every department involved. Fortunately, Pluxy already had this OKR system in place and pod teams who work cross-departmentally. So it was an easy thing to bring CX into these pods. Um, But it was also, I think, some convincing um, as far as, well, not necessarily convincing, but creating the right structures to bring the voice of the customer into every department. And because I was talking about my team, um, my one of my team members, actually, Emmanuel, came up with this idea of having a CX Ambassadors program, and he launched it last week, by last year, sorry. Uh, and it's been going great, and we've been using it to gain trust and gain momentum so that every department can be involved in uh, CX initiatives and understand the impact they have uh, at the customer level. Right. And what what does that look like for them? For instance, if I'm in accounts, how would you involve myself in in the CX um, Mm know-how? Well, first of all, they have a direct connection with the customer uh, because they are involved in solving tickets. And also they have access to um, the drivers and the satisfaction behind their particular work 
for clients and in our case merchants. So they know what clients and merchants are saying about their financial statements, about how easy it is to read them and to uh, operate the payments. And whenever uh, issues arrive, they are the first to learn about the customer's feedback regarding them. Right. And when it comes to your organization, in, in terms of planning out your CX strategy, what does that look like in terms of length of time? Is it something that you do for five years, for three years, year on year, quarter on quarter? Mm -hmm. What normally is the timeline that you set out when planning a CX strategy? And also, mm -hmm. so that other fellow professionals can appreciate, how do you measure your performance in CX? So uh, first of all, CX strategy needs to be linked with business strategy. So the cycle of the CX, so setting up the CX strategy is in line with the cycle of the business strategy. And for us right now, that is three years, but we uh, continue to look at it at yearly. So actually now in March, we just had our yearly strategy planning sessions. Um, and your other question was, um, Measurement. Sorry, it. Measurement. Measurement of CX strategy. Okay. So um, we don't take a one model fits all when it comes to measurement. So uh, we try to address different indicators that would measure the performance of each department, but also measure the satisfaction and loyalty of consumers. Moreover, uh, we are working on the metric, if I can say so, and I'm, uh, I'm partial to the customer lifetime value, I have to admit, although um, I believe the right metric depends on the level of maturity and both business maturity and CX maturity of a company. Um, so in our case, uh, the metric I'm striving to uh, measure for the CX strategy would be customer lifetime value. Uh, because it is mostly linked to the growth of a business. It incorporates um, notions of increased spend and retention, which are correlated, and we have proved this, to satisfaction and loyalty. Uh, it is also linked to understanding uh, what our company's right investment should be in each customer. And uh, with advanced analytics, we uh, plan to be, um, well, to use it in predictive and prescriptive Cryptive models. Um, by the way, I'm a big geek, so this area fascinates me. Um, and it's also that type of metric because you were uh, asking about multiple departments. It's that kind of metric that can bring together multiple departments and show how each contributes to the overall customer value. Um, it's true that in order to act upon it, you have to first build it. So we're still in the process of building it. Um, and we also, you also have to integrate the model into your CRM and other systems like orchestration ones. Uh, and you also have to make sure you have a dedicated strategy for all the segments. So that's uh, what we'll be working on. But right now, the CX strategy uh, is working on really measuring the performance and satisfactions of various indicators. Uh, we have correlations between them with the value uh, they bring to the business, which initiative it brings to the business. And um, aside from the, you know, external strategy, we also have our internal strategy because I also lead the training and the quality monitoring sides of our customer care uh, team. And uh, we always couple that with how um, us as employees, um, how happy we are, how satisfied we are uh, each week. We actually have a survey that measures this for us each week. That was going to be my next question on, on the CX or rather EX that you have. And I'm glad you've touched on that. I'm quite surprised that you have a survey each week. That seems rather very frequent. And so over time, what are some of the revelations you've seen uh, with that particular survey of, of the internal customers and how do you then tweak it? Because one week, in my opinion, seems a very quick turnaround time. So how do you juggle that being very frequent? Um, it is every week, but we haven't yet reached the survey fatigue, you know, internally. Um, it's also because uh, we only have uh, four to six questions every week. 
uh, and uh, there are throughout the month, I would say, we answer a lot more questions that link to different elements of satisfaction and happiness across the, the company. So you really get the same question every month, not every week as it repeats itself. Um, it's not necessarily, I mean, the, the questions are designed to take our pulse, but it's really the open questions that uh, are really read by the managers um, and that allows the company to understand the challenges that some employees might be facing at different times in the, in the year. Uh, we do have our peak moments and our campaigns. So, um, you know, the, the trend drops a little bit as far as workload during that time. But what we mostly look at is at not at having a consistent and constant trend and also understanding what are the elements that sometimes uh, drop within each team or among uh, between different segments in our uh, employees and so on. Um, and we're using actually the learnings from our internal survey to also develop a tool to measure our clients, employees, happiness and satisfaction because we are in the business of employee engagement and we know that happy employees, uh, first of all, make happy clients, but also uh, as uh, overall, they uh, lead to um, company growth, to company profit uh, and loyal employees make up very successful businesses in the end. And are there any organizations that you admire in terms of the way they've uh, executed their CX strategies or whatever it is they're doing to satisfy their customers? A few case studies or stories that have come your way that maybe you can share with us that you look up to? Aside from our company, right? <laughs> um, uh, I have this, uh, this favorite brand. It's a local Romanian brand. If you give me the address, I'll send you some products. I, maybe they pass the uh, the security. Um, they're called Rom. Uh, it's actually Rum, but spelled in Romanian. Um, they're a confectionery company, so mainly chocolate. Um, they started out with chocolate bars filled with chocolate and rum cream, uh, but they're so good at um, evoking nostalgia for you know, young and old alike, even though young people don't have nostalgia, they, they manage to recreate that for, that for them. And they're constantly uh, listening to the, the feedback of their consumers. That's what I like the most. Uh, their, their full strategy uh, revolves around creating new experiences, creating new flavors, bringing in um, you know, a fun approach or a surprising approach. Uh, and it's it's a product you, you you might think, well, how can you further innovate chocolate? But they managed to do that. And I was actually, before we started this discussion, uh, I was seeing on Facebook that uh, right now they um, launched a jar of rum-filled cream, well, chocolate and rum cream, similar with Nutella, I guess. Uh, but I can't wait to try it. You know, it's it's that thing where you can't wait to try it. And I think a couple of weeks ago, I found in the store, uh, they had this uh, secret flavor edition of their chocolate. And you were supposed to taste it and go to this QR code and uh, try to guess the, the two flavors that were in the, the chocolate. And they had different QR codes and different flavors. I, I didn't guess it. I, I'm not good at tasting. Um, but yeah, it's it's the kind of CX strategy that never um, allows its consumers to think they, they're getting old. You know, they're you've seen everything. You know, you're they're constantly uh, coming up with something new, and they do this by by constantly listening and getting the feedback from consumers. Um, I think other great examples in Romania. Um, are mostly online retailers um, because, I mean, partially because they have the advantage of uh, digital and so many digital tools that um, they could analyze user analytics, 
they were the first ones to build really great uh, closed the loop systems and programs. Um, and they also have the advantage of, you know, very large sales and a very large consumer database that um, they can work with all the analytics that you just uh, read about at some point and you, you can't really uh, deploy in every company. Oh, those are two amazing examples that you've shared there. And I, and I noticed that both examples have a very big element of marketing embedded in them in as far as uh, pushing their CX strategies is involved. And earlier on, you mentioned that yourself started out in marketing. So how has your knowledge of marketing aided your CX professional journey? What Has it had a very big impact on, on the way you execute some of your strategies and how you go about your, your work? Mm, I think what I like most about CX is that um, when you go to any CX networking event, you find people of so many different backgrounds. And it's such an interdisciplinary approach uh, that, again, there's not a one size fits all. So I think I was influenced by my marketing background, but more than that, I was probably influenced by my research background to start with. Um, and I have a very data-driven approach and a very measurement-driven approach to, to customer experience. So for me, yes, it is about the marketing communication and the marketing or orchestration you can do around customer experience, but it's mostly about what structures you can have in place um, and what segmentations and what profiles you can bring forward um, that's where, you know, my, my true geekiness in CX lies, uh, and also the analytics side. Um, but I think marketing, you know, was the first industry to, to tell us from a CX perspective, it's not about your product. It's about the needs and the jobs to be done that your product and service can serve. It's always about the customer and so on. So I think CX as a discipline started in marketing, um, but it has come in more than two, 25 years, such a long way to uh, really encompass everything. And that's why being around CX professionals, you know, and I'm including yourself here is it's such a great and engaging opportunity every time because you, you're constantly learning new things from these other uh, areas. Full statement and one that will help us close out today's uh, podcast session. So before we let you go, Andrea, what parting words or wisdom can you share with the audience in as far as CX is concerned, if there's anything you'd like to share with everyone watching and listening to take home as a message, what would that be? Oh, um, I think sharing is caring. <laughs> so I think CX is still about sharing, uh, sharing everything you do with your stakeholders uh, and being a company that's transparent and open to uh, suggestions and putting yourself out there for your customers. Um, and I believe CX uh, as a profession is still maturing and can only benefit from professionals sharing uh, examples and best practices among themselves. So um, in that line, it was a pleasure to share a bit of uh, my thinking here today. And if this helps someone think a bit differently about uh, customer experience, then I hope they will share this back with us. <laughs> right, wonderful words indeed. So Andrea, thank you so much for coming onto the show. I know it's your first time, but it's been an yeah. exceptional interview. I've enjoyed it very much. And I know that there are others who've watched and listened that maybe want to get in touch with you. So for anyone who's watching this, who maybe wants to reach out, where can they find you on the internet? I'm on LinkedIn. I actually spend more time on LinkedIn than Facebook or other social networks. Uh, so feel free to uh, uh, to drop me a line there. And um, yeah, let's share together things on, on CX. Right. Well, thank you so much, Andrea. We hope to have you again in the future. And uh, we wish you the very best on your CX journey. Thank you. The same. <laughs>